Hey everybody, welcome back to Wallet Reset. It's Mike Malbro, and in this video, I'm going to walk you guys through the reason why most people fail and succeed, which I call the success feedback loop, okay? Uh, and it's really only four parts, uh, and it's really based on how people think and make decisions that will either keep them spiraling in a downwards direction and getting more failures and, and just getting more frustrated with life and how some other people just seem to always succeed, always be moving in a direction that helps them in life. So how I even come across this? As you guys may know, if you've watched any of my videos in the past, um, I, you know, about two years ago, was struggling super duper bad, uh, had a lot of negative things going on in my life, and I just got sick of it, and I was like, I don't care what I have to do, I am going to change my life. And I gave everything to doing this. So it's not easy, right? And I want you to know that before you get into it. It's not easy, but it's doable. And if you're committed, if you're passionate about having success in your life, you can do this too. So I don't want to waste a lot of your time. Here, let me show you what this feedback loop is. So... The feedback loop, right, is really, it's also quadrants, right? So this is the thing. You actually are in, primarily in one of these quadrants at all times whenever you are having a motivation or a decision or so on and so forth. And you tend to focus in that area as well. So, and I'll also tell you this. This is me understanding how I made my decisions. If you're like a psychologist or something like that, you're like, this isn't right about well, well, I'll tell you what, this worked for me. If you don't mind uh, sharing and helping other people, leave a comment <laughs> below because I'm only here to help uh, and, and give people advice that will, I believe, will help them to move forward and get what they want out of life. So anyway, getting right down to it. What I have noticed and what happens with most people, right, is they are in one of these areas almost at all times uh, and typically spend the majority of their time in one of these areas based on uh, how they made decisions in their life, right? So there's emotional, right? There's people who make decisions based on desire, people who are action-oriented, people who are results-oriented. So starting right here, right? Most people start off as children, as very emotional children. And unless you are conditioned to leave that state of mind, ten, people tend to stay right here, right? So what do I mean by that? A lot of people base all of their decisions on the emotion that they're in at the current moment. Leads them a lot of times to live in the moment and almost feel like they have no control over uh, their life, right? They, they pretty much are in the backseat of their life. Um, and so what happens is when something happens and they get angry, that thing made them angry. Uh, when they, uh, for example, if you were to wake up in the morning, you feel really great. And then you hop out of bed and stub your toe, you feel really bad. And you're like, man, that sucks. And now your whole entire day, you're thinking about how mad you are about hitting your toe as soon as you got out of bed. All right. These people... Um, tend to also, on a positive note, be very good at making friends. They're very empathetic. They're very uh, easy to talk to uh, as long as you are positive. When you're not positive, they're easy to get upset. Uh, so that's the emotionally focused people. Um, then you have people who are desire focused. So desire focused people tend to be people who are uh, like they crush on like a guy or a girl or they want to have a nice car, a nice house, a nice whatever, and they feel uh, almost unconsciously pulled towards the things that they desire, right? So people who are desire-driven people um, are typically going to make decisions similarly to people who are emotionally driven, right? Uh, these people, are, though, are a lot more... Um, I would say I would say they they can be manipulative, but they're also a lot more strategic on the on the positive note, 
right? They tend to want to do things in order to achieve a desire or fulfill a desire. So, for example, like these two people, right? This is this is the negative feedback loop. So what most people do is they go from emotion to desire, right? And this is the negative feedback loop. So they go from like, uh, uh, I'm unhappy, right? And that's their emotion. And then their desire, they locate and they're like, oh, I want to be happy, right? Now, right along here somewhere, right? Now this dot is logic, right? Now here's the thing, logic isn't necessarily always good, right? Because if you are an emotion-based person or a desire-based person, what tends to be logical if you are in a negative loop is that you won't get what you want, right? This is also based on scarcity, people who don't believe that they can get what they want. And so that desire hits the logic and it's like, you know what, we're probably not going to do this. Uh, it's probably going to fail for whatever reason, yada, yada, yada. And so what happens is this logic sends them right back to their emotion and calms that emotion down that made them feel like they could have what they wanted. And this works with people who are in businesses, right? People in business do this a lot. They have an emotion that is like, I, I'm unhappy about my business or I'm anxious about my business or whatever. And then they say, well, my desire is to have more customers. Then they get this logic theory, right? And the logic theory is like, I mean, think about it. Like, you don't have a lot of money. How are you going to go out and advertise? Or how are you going to get in front of people? Uh, you work hours every, you know, you work 12, 15 hours a day. How are you going to go out there and network and meet new people? And so they go right back into the feedback loop and say, you know what? I do want that, but it doesn't seem realistic. So they go right back into here. And that's where they stay. They stay in this feedback loop. Now, you can have a degree of success if you are this type of person. And the reason why is because people tend to, at times, even if they live in this feedback loop primarily, they at times will jump over to the action part of the feedback loop. And so what they do is they say, you know what, I'm just going to take action, right? Now, when they take action, they usually will get a result, right? Now, that result can be positive or negative. Now, what happens with most people who live on this side is that they have a negative result and then that feeds their emotion. And they're like, you know what? I knew I couldn't do this. I don't know why I even tried. And they quit. Right? And then they stay in this until they have another idea that makes them feel like they should take action. Now, what happens with people who are successful? Right? People who tend to be successful. People who uh, shoot for the stars and actually get close. They may be on this side. Right? But they don't stay there. What they do is they tend to be the type of people that go from emotion to desire. And then instead of them building the action step, right, going straight to the action step, what they do is they find a way to basically look into, I'm sorry if this doesn't make sense, but they look into the results box and they say, okay, well, what's the result that I have to have? Essentially, they set a goal. Right? And then once they look at that, they say, okay, well, this is what I have to do to fulfill this emotion to get this. Right? They, this, is, this is the result I'm after. Right? And so they look at the result and they say, all right, so in order to get the result, what actions do I take? So they list out all the actions and then they immediately realize, hey, I could do this. So what they've done is they've essentially paid the gatekeeper, the logic, to believe right? The gatekeeper feeds the emotion that the action that we're going to take is going to work. And then they take action and get a result. And the cool thing about this is that what happens is they are able to detach themselves from the emotion that leads them to fail. So what they do is they say, okay, I'm going to take action. Boom, right? They take action and they don't get the exact thing that they want, but they got a result, whether they uh, hit their expectation or not. And if they don't, or if they do hit their expectations, what they do is they say, huh, okay, something happened, 
that's good. That means that I'm taking action and they give themselves an emotion, right? They, they look over at the emotion, right? And they say, you know what? I took an action. I didn't necessarily get the result that I want, but what do I have to do in order to change my action? So the, the result immediately goes to the logic. It immediately goes to the logic. They're not thinking about their desires. They're not thinking about their emotions. They're thinking about actions, results, logic to feed new actions, right? And then they take a new action, get a new result. Then they look at logic again. And that's really the whole entire process is over and over and over. They go from taking action and looking at the result and then understanding what they have to do next. Uh, this is the principle behind Kaizen, is that this is the loop that we want to stay within. Uh, Kaizen, if you haven't watched the video, watch the video, but Kaizen is essentially where you are trying to make constant improvements, teeny tiny improvements over a long period of time. All right, uh, this is going to help you, right? And these people tend to be the people who study they also tend to take responsibility for everything that happens to them, whether it's negative or positive. And this is something I had to learn to do for myself, was hold myself accountable, right? Find others to tell me what I was doing wrong, right? Finding a mentor, a role model, or somebody to at least copy. And so ultimately what I'm trying to get across to you guys is this. If you are finding yourself struggling, right? A lot of times it's because you are attaching an emotion to an expect, expectation of a result, right? So if you're not getting the girl that you want, you're, it's probably because you're too focused on the desires and the emotions, right? You're too focused on all the things that could go wrong, right? Or you're too focused on the, your inability to get that thing. And you're not focused on, okay, what are the actions I need to take to get the result I want? So if you have a business, right, what's the action that you have to take to get the results you want? Not the emotion, right, not the desire, the action to the result. Then you look back at what you did and say, how can I improve? Hopefully this has helped you guys. Uh, I hope that diagram actually helps you to understand how this works and how you can stay action-oriented, results-oriented, and then have a feedback loop for success. All right, this has been Mike Melville. It's been fun, guys. I hope you guys got something out of this, and I'll see you guys on the next video.